What's going on? Happy Thursday to you guys. I hope you're doing well wherever you're watching from in this beautiful world that we have. It's a great day here in Orlando. It's beautiful outside. It's a little hot. It's a little bit, little, little hot outside. It's starting to already get a little humid and you guys are already checking in. So it means so much that uh, we had people like 10 minutes before the show started already checking in. They know the drill. They know what's going on. And that's where, where are you guys watching from tonight? Uh, we had Mike say, hey, checking in from Celebration. Also, on behalf of my whole family, thank you for mentioning Sal's Pizza Bar, just like we had in New York. That means that means the world. I'm so glad. Uh, if you guys haven't followed us over on Instagram, the Orlando Real is my real estate team's like all things Orlando page. Uh, it's like short form. So you guys are watching here on YouTube, but over on Instagram and TikTok, uh, the Orlando Real is where we have it. And we talked about uh, the Sal's Pizza Bar. We did a whole review and it went like crazy. We had like 700,000 views. The owners there said, uh, you know, they're from New York and just amazing pizza. And a lot of you guys have been checking in, talking about how great it is. So thank you so much. Stephanie checking in, as always. So, so good to see you from South Carolina. I appreciate you checking out. Thomas is hanging out in Windsor Hills, one of my favorite short-term rental communities down in Kissimmee. Who else we got here tonight? We've got Vicken checking in from Fort Lauderdale. Good to see you. Xavier checking in from Kissimmee. Capstone checking in over at Huntsville, Alabama. Dawn from Rhode Island's here. We got L. Roberts from Austin. Uh, let's see. Carlos says, hey, I'm a real estate team in Miami, retiring to Orlando in two years. See you then. I so appreciate that. We got Andrew hanging out from Chicago. Uh, when can we get the White Sox to move to Orlando? That, my friend, you don't need two teams in Chicago. You got the Cubs, you got the White Sox. Just give them, give us one of them, right? It's either them, the Blue Jays. I'll take really anything right now for some more sports going on here. We got Susanna checking in from Mount Dora. A lot of other people, Claremont, Packing District. Oh, so cool. A lot of locals and people from all over. So keep letting us know down below. It does mean the world figuring out where our, our crew, our, where our community is hanging out here. And it helps me craft kind of what we want to talk about. And so tonight we're talking about uh, this interesting meeting that I went to. So apparently, you know, Visit Orlando, which is our call it our tourist marketing arm of Orange County and Central Florida. Uh, they're here basically to, to get more eyeballs here and to get more people involved. They had this meeting over the past week alongside Orange County, and they were going to each district. And I, you know, I live in District 1, and so I went to the District 1 meeting. And it was fascinating, actually. I mean, I was sad to see such a low turnout. I mean, there was like some of you guys are following over on Instagram because that's all clicking in the background over here. Um, it was interesting to me because uh, there were only like 25, 30 people in the room. And the whole conversation was around like, what can we do as Central Floridians to make sure that Orange County and also the surrounding counties continue to... As soon as you guys follow over there, he's clicking. It's it's great. Um, and so how what can we do to make sure that... We don't hold Orlando back. And there was a lot of data behind this. And there were like five key things that I'm going to talk about first and just kind of get your feedback and see what you guys think about what's holding Orlando back from becoming an even better tourist destination and better for people to live here kind of in, in, in kind of in conjunction with one another. I thought it was a fascinating conversation that I'm excited to share with you tonight. Uh, we're going to talk all about uh, UCF football. We're talking about UC Universal. We're talking about Disney tonight. We're talking about some real estate stuff and any questions that you guys have, make sure you drop them in the comments below because I'm really, that's that's what this is all about for you guys to learn a little bit more about our amazing community and answer your questions if I can at all. Uh, let's see. We got a bunch of other people. So <laughs> Cooper sounds says, yo, yo, you know, Chad Jemson. Yeah, I sure do. I know Chad my dude up in uh, the Carolinas. Let's see. Unicorn checking in from Philadelphia. We got Connie checking in from k -Hob Four Seasons. Judy checking in from Maryland with Florida Dreams. Of course, of course. Holly says, I'm still, it's still in Seattle, but we're under a tornado warning. We're all good in our town, but it's crazy out there. Goodness, well, I hope you stay safe uh, up there in Seattle. So let's go over and talk about what they're saying with this whole like Visit Orlando uh, study. And, and it wasn't just Visit Orlando that did the study. They actually hired this whole firm. And this is what they do. They come to town and they interview CEOs and political people locally and residents. And they try to get as much feedback as possible. And then they kind of come up with sort of this, this metrics of how well is the city doing? What are some things that could be better? And, uh, and then report those things back to the community, get our feedback, and then from then help craft a plan for what it's going to look like moving forward. I think this is fascinating because 
rare, rarely do like actual residents get any kind of say in what happens. Yes, we can vote for people and hope that they do what we hope that they vote for. Uh, but, but being able to craft kind of like the direction of our town and, and where things are going to me is a fascinating thing to be a part of. And so that's why when I showed up, I was like, I was expecting like hundreds of people at least to be there. And there were like 25 people there. So it's frustrating to me. But anyways, here we go. This is some of the things that people were talking about when you look at like a, a tourist destination like ours, they look at like visitor engagement, community alignment, partner support. So meaning the, like the, the businesses in the area, major events and sporting uh, events, uh, and then destination development. And so they take all of that and they say, okay, where, what are some things if you look at like, oops, sorry, let me pop over here. What are some things that make a good location based on all of that? So Destination Next, that's actually their, the company that put all this together. Ooh, let me move myself out of here because I do not look, you guys don't want to see me covering this stuff. Ooh, look at that. Boom, let's see. Maybe move this over here. Oh, what a terrible spot that was in. Let me see here. I want to make sure you guys can see what this is. Cause I, I don't personally, I find it fascinating. Uh, let's see, move you up here. Lock it, close it. Boom. Now you can see it. Okay, cool. So they talked about basically four different things, voyagers, trailblazers, explorers, mountaineers, which mean, meant nothing to me. But <laughs> if you look over on the west, the, the, the left side, it says weak destination, strong destination. Where do you guys think we rank in terms of Orlando? Are we a weak destination or are we a strong destination? And then on the bottom, you can see weak destination alignment and strong destination alignment, meaning like the local community. How, how, how aligned are we with our tourist community, if you will. And so they basically said, Hey, we're a, we're a strong destination. We've got 74 million people visiting us on a, on a given basis. And then you look at where we're at overall for like strong alignment with the community versus weak community alignment. And they said, Hey, listen, we're actually really high on the overall destination alignment. And so it put us like over in this orange box up here, which basically they said, Hey, listen, out of all of the places that we looked at, and they've looked at like 30 to 40 different cities using this exact same model. They went to Austin and Vegas and Charlotte and uh, Dallas and all of these different places. They're like, Orlando is basically number two in regards to overall growth. But in regards to this like little four quadrant here, you guys are like way up into the, into the orange, which means that you guys are like poised to take off if you keep five things in mind. And so here's kind of what they said. They said, listen, there's number one thing that they need to figure out or we need to figure out as Orlando or Landonians is employment. Now, I, it's interesting because if you look at, let's see, I pulled this up here for us just to get an idea. If you look at the overall employment for Orlando right now, it's 2.9%. Um, and if you look at the overall, you know, the trend line here, I mean, it was... <laughs> May of last year was 2.3%. And then it kind of bloomed up to 3.1. But staying under 3% is, is considered full employment, meaning that we've got more jobs available than we have people. And so what they were going through is they were saying, hey, listen, we've got all of these jobs. And in fact, there was like the Orlando um, Economic Partnership put out something. They said, Orlando adds 100 jobs per day in 2023. And it says, uh, they revised the estimates to suggest that Orlando region added 42,200 jobs in 2023. The uh, the gain represents a return to pre-pandemic trends, ending a period of record-breaking, breaking, a record-breaking but unsustainable job growth. And so back to the future, Orlando averaged 44,000 jobs in a five-year period leaning, leading up to uh, the pandemic. So we're right kind of on track to continue our job growth and what's going on. But where was that growth actually happening? So thankfully, it wasn't just leisure and hospitality. In fact, if you looked, uh, education and health led the way. Then you had leisure and hospitality after that. Business and professional services were right after that. Retail, whole, wholesale trade, government jobs, construction jobs, manufacturing, financial activities, mining and law. Mining and logging. <laughs> there was a hundred. That's kind of where if you are in mining and logging, please let me know because I don't I don't know that I've ever met anybody in Central Florida that is in mining or logging. Uh, but anyways, so jobs were the number one thing. And so most people say, well, the jobs here don't pay enough, especially in the tourism industry. And I get it. Like you can't raise a family anymore by working at Disney or Universal or SeaWorld 
on the front lines. Like as people are walking in, unless you're dual income and you're living on, you know, you're, you're, you're barely making it right. It's hard to make minimum wage at Disney or universal and, and make it, which is why they're doing so many affordable housing projects and that kind of thing. But they're basically saying that, Hey, it's not that we don't have enough good paying jobs, but it's also enough people to fill these jobs. And if we're talking about over here where it's health and education, you need to pay your teachers more. You need to pay your nurses more hundred uh, percent, but then professional businesses, retail, wholesale, it's interesting. So let me know what you guys think. Let me make sure I'm catching up here. Uh, Robert says great way to spend a Thursday. I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's fascinating in terms of the jobs. The second thing they said was same thing that has to go with do jobs pay enough was affordable housing. Now, this is the other thing is the over average sales price for Orlando. Let's pull it up right now. This is the average sales price for Orlando sales price over the past week was 511. This is all five counties. Um, but if you look at the average interest rates, which are now like seven and a half percent and the average job here, those are some things that are holding Orlando back is figuring out affordable housing. The three, the, the third thing they talked about was transportation, because honestly, we could have people live in affordable areas uh, like a Haines City or like a Winter Haven or heck, I mean, Lakeland's a little too far to live to work in Orlando and live down there. Uh, but Davenport, Lauman, there's a lot of places that are decent, but the transportation here hasn't hit the mark yet. And so the cool thing is, if you look at the follows on over on uh, the Orlando Reel, we talk about uh, the $2.5 billion transportation project that's finally been fast tracked. So instead of it taking 25 years, it's going to be more like 10 years to finish out. Uh, so that's a good thing. Uh, the next thing was sustainability. So making sure that like when people are moving here, how do we sustain this? They started going through recycling, a bunch of other things that um, honestly, I felt like maybe wasn't on the top five, but they felt like it was on the top five. And then the last thing was just complacency. They're like, hey, listen, you guys uh, are the number one spot. Second in growth, but number one, if you're talking about tourist destinations that are also growing as a city. And the only thing right now is just going to be if local politicians and residents get complacent on where we're at. And I just thought that was really interesting because for me, there's over 1500 people moving to central Florida every week. What do we do with those people when they get here is, is number one. Uh, but then how do we take care of them? You know, I think is number two. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Fergie show says we need an NFL team. I totally agree. <laughs> See, we've got a bunch of other people I missed. Here we go. So Xavier says, Hey, can you recommend any areas where I can find a single family home with an accessory dwelling unit for around 500? Not with an ADU, uh, accessory dwelling unit. I think, um, speaking of the affordable houses, in that five list that I just went through, that was one of the number one things they mentioned. They said, hey, why don't we allow more ADUs? And in Orlando, they do. There's actually tons of people that are tearing down their little two-car garage, building an ADU over top of it, renting that out. Uh, if you look in places like Celebration, Lake Nona, uh, there's Baldwin Park, there's people that have these already in their backyard and they rent out like that. And somebody can have a one bedroom or two bedroom over a garage for cheaper than they can an apartment, but it feels like a house, which is kind of cool, but under 500, Man, that's a that's a tall order, unfortunately. Six, seven hundred in some areas, um, for sure. Um, let's see. Going back over. I'm gonna take a little drink before I go to the next question. Kim says the biggest problem. Oh, there's a bunch of you talking in, in uh, so Diz Dev. Here's one thing I think is really cool is the community of you guys showing up every Thursday and now getting to start to know each other. That's kind of amazing. Uh, but Deb says, hey, um, they're going to be wrapping up on their property that they're buying. And Kim says, hey, the big, biggest problem that we had was we got to the house, which we closed on a month ago. None of the doors were locked and the front door was wide open. Holy moly. Hopefully that nothing, hopefully no like r raccoons got in there or something like that. <laughs> um... Let's see. Fresh to salty said, if uh, wages don't keep up with the cost of living, living in city will make it difficult for residents. That's true. That's true. County bat says, Hey, do I think they'll ever going to enhance the link bus system? This is one of the things that the residents that were in the room talked about was enhancing the, li the link bus system. And then also the sunrail system, because right now, I mean, <laughs> so I raised my hand. I was like, if this, they were like, we don't need to build more trains. We need to keep the trains that we have on the tracks longer during, during the day and on the weekends. And if they took that out, 
where you could actually use it more often, I think that would be an option and help take some cars off the road. Other people in the room said, well, yeah, but it's kind of dangerous, especially once the sun goes down. And so I think you'd have to figure out safety. I mean, is it somebody, is there an armed sheriff or security on the train, something like that? Um, but yeah, definitely. Um, Kellen says, if I was going to open a fine dining restaurant in Orlando, what area would I open it in? Um, well, if it's fine dining, then obviously you're gonna need somebody to, to spend some money. I would think uh, Winter Park, Baldwin Park, uh, depending on where it is and what you can afford for rent, I think on the outskirts of some of those would totally do well. Um, all of the really high-end restaurants we go to, a lot of those are at the resorts. Uh, but outside of that, a lot of times it's Winter Park, Baldwin Park. Uh, Perry says, hey, do I know any new construction builders that will build with contingent on the buyer's sale of their home? Yeah, man, there's there's actually more and more people that are willing to do that, more and more builders, because things have slowed down uh, on the new construction side. And so um, they're offering incentives, or some of them are offering home to sell contingencies. Um, they might say like, hey, you have to sell it within the next three months, four months. And the build time is going to be six months. So you might need to figure something out in regards to where to rent for a couple uh, a couple months. Um, sometimes they give you like a 30 day home to sell contingency where it's like, you have to get it under contract in 30 days and then you might need to rent something for six months. So it just depends, um, but there's definitely ways that we can work around that for you for sure. Um, JJ says, checking in from Hunter's Creek. You already know. What's up, Mr. Sean? Good to see you, buddy. So this is the thing, buddy. So I don't know if you're, I know I asked you about running because that's how I know you. Um, but this weekend, we have the summertime, summertime surprise, springtime surprise with Disney. Uh, I'm doing the 10 miler on Sunday. And I have not done a long run since February. So we're going to see how this goes, especially as this thing is getting insanely hot. Anticus says, what do I think about recreational mar mar marijuana in the state of Florida? Also been seeing you on Insta Reels. Keep it up, man. Yeah, I appreciate you following us over on Instagram. And I think that um, recreational marijuana, we already have medical marijuana here and getting the card from what I hear is super easy. So I don't, there's other places I visit, like I'm from Detroit originally. And I remember going back there where it's much more prevalent and like every single billboard is a weed billboard nowadays and every rental car I get in smells like weed and like everywhere I go, man, I don't know. Do I think it flies through? I don't know that it flies through. Um, JJ says, Hey, Hayden's been amazing to work with, with Kyle. I appreciate that, man. Thank you so much for the intro, by the way, they told me they're like, JJ recommended, a, recommended us. And I said, the mayor of, of Hunter's Creek, JJ. So funny. Uh, jo Johnny says, what's going on from Michigan? I appreciate it. Ah, here we go. This is the stuff I'm looking for. So uh, Ronald Smooth Lewis says, I'm in transportation and logistics space and any successful Orlando business, any successful homegrown businesses are homegrown here. So do you, do you mean like as in that a lot of them aren't relocating here? Because I think we're definitely seeing some relocate here. But yeah, we've got a lot of great homegrown brands for sure. Uh, Mr. Tech Brandon, what's the newest for Wellness Way? So I went out there two weeks ago and I just did a drive to every neighborhood and it looks like they're moving dirt for the retail center for the Olympus project. And you look at like Lennar's Wellness Ridge. For one, I was surprised to see the quality of Lennar. I'm usually not a Lennar fan uh, in regards to just like their base product, but I felt like they leveled it up for Wellness Ridge, which to me was like, that's good. Like that's what we want in that area. Um, uh, but so far, you know, not a ton going on differently. So Mr. Sean asks, Hey, curious, I'm best, uh, what's the best way to determine that you're not overbuilding the outdoor space, such as a pool and entertainment area, man, that's a great question. So there's whether you're looking at a kitchen, a bath, uh, an outdoor space pool, that kind of thing. Um, you gotta look at like, what's the standard for your neighborhood. So as an agent, like I'll come in and some people will say, oh, we spent 300 grand in our backyard. And then I have to extrapolate out, okay, your similar house down the street without all of that sold for 700 grand. And then this one down the street with a pool sold for 750. 
is it possible that you're going to get a million for your house just because you invested 300 grand? I've had these conversations, especially recently. The answer is no. You have to look at, okay, that pool home added $50,000 and maybe you get a little bit more than that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the way to go about it is like, try to figure out if you have a great pool and outdoor area, and then another one down the street without that, what's the Delta there so that you can figure out what that's worth. And then make sure you're not spending too much over that. Now you also have to remember like some of these things you're going to do because you love them. Like we're adding an addition off the back of our house. Um, because frankly, like just an outdoor living space, like dining and living space, outdoor kitchen. And I know that that's not, uh, not going to get me back what I'm spending on it. It'll probably get me 60% of what I'm getting back on it. Um, but we plan on living there for at least the next five years and I'm going to enjoy it and I will get some return. Um, so I think that's, that's how I justify it. Now, some people will say like, oh, <laughs> I bought a house. I didn't like the floors. So I swapped the flooring out from, you know, vinyl, like luxury plank vinyl to luxury plank vinyl, just a color that I liked better. Um, but I spent $20,000 on it. So I want to return. And I'm like, dang, you guys are making it hard on me because you're just not going to get a return just because you swapped it out and spent the money doesn't mean you're going to get the money. Uh, what's up, Miami Coffee? Good to see you. I just got some water here tonight, but I'll, I'll cheers to you on that. Um, Sean says, AS, oh, you're not running this uh, springtime run because of travel. Dude, I get it. I tried to hit on the marathon. I was, I was on for the marathon for like 75 minutes and it sold out. Crazy. Dizdev asks, hey, how, do, how high do I see interest rates going this year? which is wild because January, I would have said, I thought they were going to drop into the high fives, low sixes. And we were trending that way. It was like high seven, seven and a half, seven high sixes. Oops. Just hit that 20 minute mark. Um, high sixes. And then we thought it was continued to drop the way that we were hoping, but inflation has continued to go. And as I mentioned with the five things in Orlando, the whole job market is doing really, really well. And so because of that, uh, interest rates are starting to tick back up. So how high they go, I don't know. I just don't see that we're going to get as many cuts as all everybody thought. Wall Street was kind of planning on three and looks like we're not going to, maybe we get one or two, but we'll see. And yeah, they are flipping. You're absolutely right. The car dude says, hey, what are some new developments in State Cloud? I mean, my favorite one is Sunbridge, uh, but if you just keep going down Narcusi, if they're like literally everywhere, um, so just depends on what you're looking for in regards to proximity, the builder type, what your budget is and that kind of thing. We're happy to narrow that in for you. Um, JJ says his friend is at 7.5% with 180 grand down. Yeah, man, I'm telling you, it's great. It's crazy. Uh, Capstone asks, oops. Uh, just disappeared on me. Capstone, there we go. Uh, says, hey, do I, do I foresee property insurance dropping anytime soon? Also, when you said Lennart's quality looks better in wellness way, in what way specifically? Uh, example, framing, foundation, that sort of thing. Uh, so I answer the first question. Insurance premiums. So like, I just got my, I got all three of my new insurance premiums or three of my houses with new premiums on them. Two of them went down, like one of them went down $250 a year. The other one went down like $110 a year. The other one went up $600 a year. And the one that went up $600 a year was my older house that we have in Winter Park. And so uh, that house just continues to just be a, a, such a, a blessing in my, <laughs> in my life. Uh, but it's like the newer houses, I see, I see premiums pulling back. Some uh, carriers are saying that they won't bind on anything that are that's older than 2020 and sometimes 2021. They want it to be as like a new new thing. But if you have a newer home, obviously your premium is going to be lower. Um, so that's that's that. Uh, do I see some of the other changes, by the way, in Tallahassee that have, are starting to come down? I think that those are going to take place more so next year. And hopefully we'll see premiums actually take more of a, a, a jump down. Uh, but nothing significant this year. Uh, the second question you ask is when I say better in wellness way, what specifically? So I noticed like, especially the townhomes are block all the way up. Um, I believe I saw a couple of the houses. I don't know if it's an upgrade or whatnot, but had block all the way up instead of framing on the second level. That was one. Two, I noticed that there's a lot of hardy backer siding instead of um, uh, some stucco all the way up. So they used to just do these stucco boxes. Um, and so for me, I like hardy cider siding. I think it's, it's made out of like a concrete product and it just 
it wears better. It doesn't have, you know, you're not worried about cracking. You're not worried about other stuff. You've got to keep it painted, but everybody paints their house. They, they have to, um, especially in central Florida. And so I just thought the extra block, the Hardy backer, it had a little bit different of an exterior, again, very similar in other neighborhoods where Lennar would just have these like plain Jane fronts and like really no elevation, but they had a little bit more architectural and depth to them. Uh, so some of that, and then touring some of the inside, it just looked like some of the finishes were nicer. The cabinets were a little bit higher level. The countertops were a little bit higher level. And so, yeah, to me, it just felt like a nicer product than the, what they were putting even in over in Horizon West. Um, Winston says, Hey dude, what's up, Ken? <laughs> what's up, Winston? Uh, he says, what's a J uh, Judson's jazz club. Definitely need to check it out. So that's at the Dr. Phillips performing arts center. And I need to check that out. I have been meaning to, we're, um, I don't know if they're called like investors or donors or whatever for the Orlando, for the Dr. Phillips performing arts center. Um, it's been so worth it. I think it's $500 a year and you get early access to all of the different shows and then discounts on tickets and like all this parking. It's, it's worth it to me um, because what I was happening was I'd go to try to get tickets and they were always sold out. And then you go back on StubHub and then, you know, they jack up the fee and then you're paying StubHub fees and all this other craziness. So anyways, check it out. They've got an investor program or a donator donor program. It's definitely worth it, but I have to check out Judson's. I have not been there yet. Um, So PW, PW3R says, hey, Ken, I'm a loan officer looking to move from Parkland to Orlando. We're getting so many people moving up from South Florida to Orlando lately. It's been it's been wild. Um, we like Oviedo due to the schools. Are there any other areas that you, you could suggest for larger lots and A-rated schools? So listen, I love Oviedo. I was out there literally just last week shooting a podcast with somebody and Oviedo on the park is fantastic. It's close to UCF. You've got larger lots, good schools. There's so many things to like about that area. Um, some people just don't like it because the proximity is not like really close. Like you go to Oviedo and then you stay in Oviedo. Like it is closer, I guess, close enough to some places like Winter Park or whatever. But if you live on the coast, it's also, or work on the coast, it's also easy for you. But other areas that are like in that demographic in terms of pricing, you're going to go like West side, like well, late, like Lake County area for some of those things. And even still, you're not going to get as large of lots as you will out, uh, out in Oviedo. So I think it's a great spot. If that's, if it's your car, car dude, sorry. If it fits your lifestyle, um, go back to St. Cloud. Yeah. The car dude. Yeah. Tohoku reserve by Pulte it is a good name. Yeah. St. Cloud area for sure. I love this question, David. So he says, Hey, we're looking to relocate to Orlando. We like Windermere. Where should we stay to get to know the town, like hotels and that kind of thing? I mean, Windermere is super close to like all the Disney and Universal hotels. Really, really easy if you want to enjoy some of that stuff and just drop in. Um, one of the places I'm putting a lot of people locally that come in town that are looking like Horizon West Windermere is over in Flamingo Crossing. I think Kim mentioned she was there earlier today. Um, there's like three new hotels over there that are super cheap but they're outside of the bubble. And so they're like very easy to get to. You don't have to worry about parking. You're right next to the 429. You're 10 minutes from Disney, but then you're maybe like 15, 20 minutes from Windermere. It would be a really easy way for you to get to know Winter Garden, Horizon West, Windermere. Um, I'm trying to think of any other ones. You know, other than that, there's just like the hotels right outside of Disney Springs that are kind of in that in between O-Town West and Windermere off of 535 and Apopka Vineland Road. There's all of those like town suites and that kind of stuff, but they're a little bit older. So that's why I like Flamingo Crossing, just because like if you want a, a good hotel, but close to everything, but it's newer, those are some great ones. Uh, da, 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 da. Yep, Rolling Stone just, just confirmed what I said. <laughs> JJ says, uh, Hunter Creek, larger lots and schools can't steer. Unfortunately. Yeah. I can't steer. That's for sure. Plenty of places that I could say like, Hey, these places have large lots. Um, car dude says, Hey, I think we're getting a lagoon in St. Cloud. Is this true? I'd heard that there's one coming to Lake Nona, but that was, that was axed. So I'm not quite sure about St. Cloud. Oh, wait, no. There is one over by Toho coming in. There's a new neighborhood that's going to have a crystal lagoon. You're absolutely right. Um, let me see this real quick. I think I talked about it like darn near a year ago. Uh, 
Yep. Yeah, Whaley Platt. So this is what it looks like. So, boop, boop. Crystal Lagoon and Marina will be part of the Whaley Platt community and east of Lake Toho, yep, in Osceola County in 2023. It hasn't actually, you know, made it through yet, but this is some of the original renderings. They're going to have, it's going to be a community. This is a whole whole community right here. And they kind of stuck it in right over by, by East Toho. So you're going to have like little ponds and lakes. It's going to be nice. I think St. Cloud is like an interesting one because you're not quite Kissimmee. You're not quite Orlando. And I think that they've got a lot of really great things once you get there. Um, it's just, it's kind of like pulled away a little bit outside of accessibility for my day-to-day -day life. But we have a lot of clients that love St. Cloud because it's affordable. Uh, it's definitely compared to some of the other places around town we're talking about. Um, Sir Piglet says, um, any thoughts on Onx ONX homes? I mean, I don't know them uh, just quite yet. So I'll put that down actually. I try to know everything, but I do not know everything. <laughs> Uh, young, young and Grace, uh, the Whole Foods uh, confirmed to Mini Miniola. It's still speculation. I have not seen anything in the um, anything in permitting. And so, once it's in permitting, to me, that means it's true. And uh, I will make a reel about it and and be as loud about it as possible because I think people would go absolutely crazy if that's for sure. Um, Amar says, "What are my thoughts around the future of Groveland? I'm, I'm a big fan of Groveland. I think that it's like." Claremont still has a really long way to go. Um, and, but like Lake County in general is like still slept on. I feel like when we talk about affordability and affordable, affordable housing and sustainability, I think that that Lake County area is Lake County. And then like East Orlando, St. Cloud up to, up to East Orlando. I think that, um, those are like the two spots left for, for Orlando to grow to. Um, but yeah, I'm a big fan of Groveland in regards to just overall affordability and then where that's going to go. As long as you're looking at it in like a five to 10 year horizon, I've got clients of ours that bought gorgeous pool homes for like three fifty four years ago. Obviously you're not going to get that now. Um, but it's continuing to go. Yeah, Pickle says, word on the street is that Whole Foods is coming to Mineola. That's true. That is the word on the street. It's just, is it true or not? That's the thing we're trying to figure out. Um, have you guys ever been in an Uber before? Obviously, you've been in an Uber before. I've been in an Uber before. Uh, so I thought this was interesting. Florida residents leave behind the most items behind in their Uber. Florida residents. And so the top three things is sunglass, hat, uh, and phone. Um, it says maybe you've forgotten hot sauce or a breathalyzer or even your pet turtle. These are some of the things that have been left behind in Uber's annual lost and found index, which I find fascinating. <laughs> Over the last 12 months, items have been, have been uh, luggage, headphones, wallets, top the list of the most frequent forgotten uh, belongings. Uh, but where do we where do we rank in regards to most forgetful cities? Uh, so Florida was number Florida was number one in regards to states, uh, but cities Miami was number one, Los Angeles number two, Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, and Orlando was number six most forgetful city in the country in regards to Uber's lost and found, which I think is hilarious. I um I have to believe, like I'm looking at this list, Miami for sure, LA, that makes sense. Atlanta, Houston, Dallas, I don't know. But Orlando, that actually surprises me that we're that low on the list. Because I think about how many people are here taking Ubers, trying to get their kids back in the Uber and then off to the airport. And the fact that we don't lose more stuff, it's kind of surprising to me, <laughs> uh, to be honest. Um, if you guys heard about what's going on at Universal, not Epic Universe, but this is actually Floridians get free tickets to Universal Orlando Resort with a new deal. Uh, this is over on uh, West Florida. What is it? Channel 8 that I pulled this from, but it's all over. You can find it on Universal's website, but it's buy two days, get two days free. This is a deal that gives access to Universal Florida, Island, Island, Universal Florida and Islands of Adventure for two extra days. Uh, the pricing of the tickets start at 234 for adults and 226 for kids. You can also upgrade to a uh, Volcano Bay package for $32. Uh, it says tickets will be valid now and to, till December 18th with a block out, small block out around Thanksgiving. Uh, so I think this is cool. I look at 
tourism in general, obviously, I think is slowing down right now. And I think that's, you know, you'll start looking at Disney and Universal, both starting to push some different things. If you haven't checked out, we did a reel and, and about the two new hotels coming over at Universal and Epic Universe. There's 1500 new hotel rooms that are going to be ranging around $140 a night. And I remember somebody told me Universal has this thing that they do with new hotels and new, specifically new hotels. Like if you look at Endless Summer and some of the other ones that are like kind of not right attached, not, not as easily accessible, um, that when they build them, they price in really low rates as part of their initial marketing and kind of like, let's get them full, let's get as many people in to spend money. Um, and I think that's brilliant because the same value hotel over at Disney is probably running more like 195 to 10, something like that. Uh, when you've got multiple kids and you're staying here for a week or two, that adds up very quickly. And so anyways, Universal, Buy two days, get two free now until December 18th. I think it's a cool little add-on. Let me go over here. Uh, Sean says, quick take, uh, speaking of Flamingo Crossing, there's a, a fit to run store there now. Yeah, I agree that they did go under the radar because I still go to Disney Springs and uh, I saw that because there's like a little, uh, a little Greek restaurant, like three doors down from this place. And I was like, there's a fit to run here. Like makes no sense. But I'm glad it's there. I need to check it out. Let's see. Charlie says, hey, any other new road plans going on? The 429 Turnpike 408 area is getting worse every day. Don't think the 429 expansion is going to help as much as once it's finished. Yeah, I feel like 429, heck, I can't wait for the extra lanes to open up. I feel like they're done almost, but they've got that little stretch to go up towards a Popka, which makes everything else back up towards the 408. And it's, you're right. It gets to be kind of a nightmare. Just like two years ago, that was like easy living. You could get anywhere you needed to go. Um, but no, I think that once, once you start taking off some of the other offshoots off of 429 to where people don't have to go up and around to mini Ola and have to use it as much, my guess, I'm not a road planner, but like my guess is that once they have like the 516 in, and some of these other little offshoots from 429. Uh, my hope is that it cuts down on some of the traffic that way. Um, but we'll see. Tom says, how much longer do I think housing will be reasonable in Claremont? Uh, listen, I think Claremont's probably continuing to get like a two to 3% on resale, two to 3% appreciation for the next five to seven years. Like that makes total sense to me. And so you got to say to yourself, like, what's reasonable? I don't think it's going to have some 20 or 50% increase in the next five years. I don't see that happening, uh, but like a consistent sort of thing. So you got to ask yourself, what do you feel like is affordable and go from there? Johnny says, hey, uh, Polk County has room for room as well for growth. Yeah, they definitely do. It's just, man, it's just traffic, right? I mean, it's like the roads for all of these things. We got to get better and make them a little bit more accessible. We have the land, we have accessible, we, we have, we have the land and we have affordable housing. It's just getting to that stuff. You know, having somebody sit in traffic for an hour, hour and a half is just not reasonable. <laughs> Mr. Sean says, there will be a stream next Thursday, even with the NFL draft. And what's the Lions going to do? Oh, man. And they're in Detroit. This is correct. Oh, I love this. Let you guys know that. Um, and we are, it'll be on the bubble. It'll be, I'll let you guys know by Tuesday. We've got two really big videos coming out. One is going to be uh, the St. Cloud, actually. Now that you mentioned this, St. Cloud video is coming out next week. Uh, we're doing a tour of a beautiful new listing that we have there. And then also doing some other neighborhood tours kind of lumped into that. So people get to know St. Cloud a little bit more. And then the week after that, we've got this like insane Lake Nona video. It's going to be a really long form video where we talk about the jobs that are going on there and the innovation and healthcare and like, yeah, a little bit of the real estate. Um, but when I started really digging into the jobs that were there, like we got a behind the scenes tour of the USTA uh, while they had their internet, their first international match last week. So cool. So, so cool. And so uh, we've got this very, like a long form video coming out the week after that. So um, Jimmy says, why am I so, so negative about Orlando? Ah, man, you must have not been watching literally anything that I've ever done because I'm very high on Orlando. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Um, all right, I got a couple of things and we're gonna wrap up for tonight. Um, let's see. All right, I don't know if you guys have checked out this UCF thing over here. So the Hagel, Hagel? Yeah, Hagel football 
gateway project. It's a $60 million expansion. And I was like, dang, like there's a, this over on Instagram. Uh, this is what it looks like now up top, Let me show you there. And then this is what the expansion is going to look like. I mean, insane amount of amenities. This looks like a little, to me, a little lazy river at the school, which is kind of insane, but to a $60 million expansion. There was a $5 million donation by uh, Mark and Sharon Hagel. That's why it's called the Hagel football gateway entry. Um, and they're all, they're raising a ton of money to get this underway. Well, anyways, it finally broke ground. It does look like it's going to be done. Let's see. They started moving dirt. Here we go. The goal is to complete the project in time for the fall 2026 football season. And the tower would, would remain open throughout construction. Uh, so UCF continues to get more and more appealing. It's now it's in the big 12. They got that big 12 money. We like to see it. What's one of my favorite houses that sold over the past week. This is 9,200 Bentley circle over in Orlando. This is in Dr. Phillips. Uh, we've got, this is Bentley circle. This is it was listed for 12.888 million built in 1994 which gosh 1994 on a house that's 20,000 square feet always gets me wondering how much money needs to be put into it but this seven bedroom eight bath home sold for the easy price of 11.8 million dollars but here's the thing they actually updated the mess out of this house it looks fantastic uh the pool was redone the outside has been done i was thinking 20,000 square feet of of rehab well someone's already done it this uh yard is so like the house the street kind of faces the bottom here um and then you get the pool tucked in the back this is over in bay hill so three two eight one nine um let's just look at this bathroom this is something else got this <laughs> wild i was a little upset when it sold because i'm like i would love to do a video here and get to actually check out this house um but anyways i'll put this in the notes down below but it was on the market for a year and a half so really long time Almost $13 million what it was listed at, sold at almost $12 million fully furnished. The, the JT couple, let's see, says, any thoughts on Bella Kalina about to go under construction on a house available on the estate side? I like, I like, I like Bella Kalina. I'm a, again, if you haven't noticed, got a little sniffle going on over here. Jeez. Um, if you haven't noticed, I, I think that like Lake County and East Orlando are like where the opportunities still lie. I think Bella Kalina over the next, especially five to 10 years is going to be a great investment because all of a sudden you're going to like, everything's going to be built in around it. Uh, five years ago, it felt like it was in the middle of nowhere. And so I'm like, ah, someone is spending a couple million dollars in the middle of nowhere. Felt like, dang, I hope you're, you're ready to make a drive. But then all of a sudden like Costco goes in and like Hills of Mineola is going in and all these other things going in all around you to where you're going to look up five years from now and you're going to have everything you need around you. And that's going to cause your pricing to go up. I think that that yeah, Bella Kalina is, is great. And the fact that it's gated, the most picturesque neighborhood, I think that we have one of the, one of the top three for sure. So yeah. Um, for sure. Sean says, hey, uh, as a realtor, what seems to be the most sought after golf community in all of Orlando? I would have to say budget dependent, um, budget dependent for sure. I think Alworth is really, really high up there. Lake Nona Golf and Country is really high up there. Um, but in terms of just like Eagle Creek, east of Lake Nona, very desirable. Skated, great amenity, public golf course. It's hard to go wrong there. And then Keens Point, man, it's like to narrow it down to one, it's just, it really has to do with like what people want, but Eagle Creek, Keens Point are more of the accessible kind of like accessible. If you're in that like 800 to $2 million uh, mark. And then if you want to take it up from there, Isleworth and like Nona Golf and Country. <laughs> JT says, I saw, I saw a big billboard with your face on it next to Disney. That was me. That was me. Uh, let's talk about politics because hey, why not? Um, if you guys didn't know, uh, Regina Hill's seat is going to be um, suspended. So ele election to take over suspended Commissioner Regina Hill's seat on Tuesday, May 21st. And so uh, there's seven people that are going to be on the ballot. And if you didn't know, Regina Hill, um, I don't know if I'm actually curious to see if this is like already proven or I know the governor made her step down or made the city vacate her seat because there was some like elder fraud and some other craziness going on there. But anyways, there's seven people that are going to be on the ballot um, qualified uh, for out of 11 potential candidates. If you're curious on who these are, I'll drop them in the description. But we've got uh, Travaris McCurdy, former 
Florida representative businessman Cameron Hope. Uh, Shan Rose, executive director of the Redevelopment Association of Eatonville. That's awesome. Community activist Lawton Gelsler, Erica Dunlap, former Miss America. Uh, we've got uh, business and financial coach, Mr. Ellison, and community activist Miles Mulrain. So if you're curious on how that stuff works, uh, Regina Hill, it says, has pleaded not guilty to what's going on, but get out and vote. This is wild to me that I know if it's a special election, I know you have to take time and rush there after work or take time on your lunch period, uh, but this stuff actually does matter. When you look at who the council is and what they vote on, stuff like actually moves the needle. And when I see how few people actually turn out in the city, it's just like, I don't care who you vote for, just just vote and just understand who you're voting for, I think is an important one. Uh, but Johnny says, Ken Posick for Orlando mayor, man, goodness gracious, you never know. <laughs> um, Bermuda checking in. Oh my gosh. E2 Alpha. I appreciate you hanging out. All right, guys, this is it for tonight. I appreciate you hanging out. We had a little bit. We had politics, real estate, theme parks, what's going to take to grow Orlando, all that good stuff. Uh, it was a good night tonight. I appreciate you hanging out with me uh, for sure. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to our channel, putting out new videos, going live at least 40, 40 Thursdays out of the year, and then putting out long form every Tuesday. So I appreciate you guys hanging out. If you're looking to buy or sell a house anywhere in Central Florida, my team and I, we do want to be a real estate resource of choice. Reach out to us at theorlandorealcom slash YouTube. We'll see you guys on the next one.